What's up, Vanguard people? This is Zach Zach here. I got a deck profile for you guys this week. It's uh, my buddy Juan's Ildana build. To get things going, we have the, the starter, full bow. It's the uh, Blaster Dark Ride Chain starter, which if you get the Blaster Javelin card that's written over it, you get to search your deck for a Blaster Dark put in your hand. So it's an excellent way to plus for nothing, for no counter blast, and to kind of maintain your ride chain. So if your opening hand has the Blaster Javelin and a Grade 3, you're pretty much set for your meeting your ride chain requirements. So he's, he's the starter for this deck. Now for the boss units, this is an Eldana deck. We have four Eldanas. For those of you who aren't, who aren't familiar with Eldana, Eldana is a card that is a Limit Breaker. So Limit Break 4, Counter Blast 2 when this unit attacks, and sacrifice two of your units and throw them in the drop zone. When you do this, this unit gets plus 3,000, and you get to draw two cards. So it's excellent for putting a temporary offense on the field and then drawing back into your defense. And it's a card that I prefer over the, uh, the Phantom Blaster Overlord because I feel like that card's ability is too expensive and it's too hard to get going. And with this, if you even unflip one damage with one of the cards in the deck or heal once, you can do it. A, you can do his limit break a third time. And most of the time, that that extra those extra cards allow you to push your opponent over the edge. So that's Ildana at four. The next card is a interesting choice. It's a the Dark Dictator. So he's a card that's kind of I guess your opposite of Alfred. He gets plus two thousand for every rear guard you have, and when he's played, you get to Soul Blast three to give plus five thousand to your front row. So the two guys next to your Vanguard that's able to attack. Um, in this deck, he's kind of the backup vanguard role, so it allows you to generate an easy column, and you don't have to ride into a weaker grade three that's uh, that you don't ever want to ride into. So he's at two as a backup. And then for the last grade threes, we have Bob Carr, or Bob D, or however you say it. He's the uh, generic card that most clans have, 9,000. And when you play him, you take the top card of your deck and put it on the rear guard. This is excellent for Eldana because it allows you to get a plus and then you get to just sacrifice the card if it's, if it's of no use to you. So that's two Bob cars. Next we'll have the one Blaster Dark. This is the Blaster Dark. You only need one, maybe two if you want to guarantee yourself an advantage, but he's just your search target for Blaster Javelin. So if you can plus or guarantee a ride chain, this is a good card just to have at least one. Next card is Skull Witch in the Main. This is actually a really good card for Shadow Palins, where it's just you play it on the rear guard, you counter blast one, you discard one card from your hand, and then you draw two. So it's an excellent way for you to plus for cheap for counter blast one, so you can pitch those draw triggers or some weak boosters that you might not need. So that's the main at two, or Nevin. Then we have four 10Ks. Two different arts because the, the dart style is pretty cool for each of them, so why not mix it up? And the 10k is just because Ildana's having you sack cards all the time. So if you can draw into those 10k's, you can make easy columns with about almost any card in the deck. So it allows you to hit cross rides for a minimum with a, with a trigger behind it. Or if you can get an 18k column, you can set it up really nicely with, this, with these generic vanillas. Now for the last grade 2 is the Curse Lancer. The Curse Lancer is probably one of the more clutch grade 2's in this deck because if your opponent's kind enough to let you flip the damage, you're going to take most advantage, the most advantage of it because unflipping that means pretty much two more cards for Eldana and one more turn of survivability. So this is a very nice card and if you can ever hit with it, it's usually kind of the defining moments of games with Shadow Paladins. Now for the grade one lineup, we run three vanilla AKs, not four because the fourth one is taken up by the generic uh, rest to discard and draw card. Um, this is nice because you get to play this card behind the Dark Dictator if you if you choose to ride him as a Vanguard. So, since he can't be boosted, well, why not just start pitching and drawing into cards that he might want to ride, like Eldana, or just trying to get different cards in your hand to play columns or do whatever. So he's at one instead of having four of these guys just for this tech backup Vanguard option. Um, for the others, we have Guru Bao. He's a 9k attacker, which is nice. I mean, you can set up easy columns with him, and he's a solid 7k boost. So, I mean, you can set up 16k columns with about, almost, about any card in the deck. 
And then for the perfect guards. The perfect guards are at four. This is a deck that focuses a lot on draw. And with the 10k vanguards, the, uh, the current meta has a lot of those 12k attackers that, with an 8k booster, swing for perfect numbers against the 10k vanguards. And being able to only guard with two cards sometimes is extremely helpful when they've thrown triggers or whatever they need to. So having this at four for a, a deck that relies on draw power is a must. And then to round out the grade one lineup, we have Blaster Javelin. Like uh, was said with the starter, he allows you to search for Blaster Dark to kind of guarantee your right chain. So now that the grade ones are out of the way, we'll go to triggers. So this deck relies on eight crits. So eight crits is pretty much, it's the easiest way for Eldana to get his work done because with Limit Break, Eldana's hitting for 24. That means cross ride numbers. And if your opponent gives you two to pass and your first check is a trigger, you're probably going to bank it because your columns are pretty weak. And right now you're just kind of outlasting your opponent by stinging away at them with your hand advantage. So having the eight crits allows you to threaten your opponent even with your rear guard columns because all of a sudden they were at four, they want to go to five, you get the crit. They all, they have to guard that attack again instead of trying to bank themselves on trying to get a trigger. Uh, the next triggers in this deck are four draws. Four draws because it's a deck that's relying on draw power, and it's just nice to have the extra draws over the probably the only other available trigger being stands. And then four heals, like any other deck, especially with Aldana. Healing allows you to get the extra counter blast off, which is almost, which is pretty like flipping with Cursed Lancer. It's a, de a defining moment in the game. So this is the Aldana deck. Um, thanks for watching.